Hi, I'm Brett Jones, and I'm a professor and motivation scientist at Virginia Tech. This presentation provides an overview of the research related to students' relationships with teachers and answers the questions, how do students' relationships with teachers motivate students? And what can teachers do to foster caring relationships with the students? One of the prevailing ideas about students' relationships with teachers is that relationships that generate positive feelings lead students to become more motivated and thus perform better academically and socially in school. This idea can be found in a few theoretical perspectives, including attachment theory, models of social support, and self-determination theory. So I'm going to briefly describe each of these theoretical perspectives. In attachment theory, attachment is defined as a deep and enduring affectionate bond that connects one person to another across time and space. So you can see that attachment focuses on a bond between two people. I think it's worth noting here that attachment can be learned. By that I mean that attachment is a relationship and not a trait that you are born with. This is shown by the fact that many quote-unquote difficult children become securely attached with sensitive parenting. And finally, attachment theorists believe that attachment is relatively stable over time. It does not fluctuate too much. Why do we care about attachment? That is, how does attachment affect outcomes? Well, attachment affects the development of internal working models, such as memories and expectations. For example, people can have a model of others as trustworthy or not. They can have a model of the self as valuable or not. And they can have a model of the self as effective or not when interacting with others. So one question that comes up is if the teacher has a student who views others as untrustworthy and believes that he is ineffective in interacting with others, can teachers do anything about this? Well, researchers have found that for children with insecure attachments, if teachers are able to behave in ways that disconfirm the insecure child's internal working models, then a secure relationship can develop between the teacher and the child. This is consistent with what I presented on the previous slide, in that attachment can be learned, and students can learn to adjust their working models of attachment. That's good news for teachers, because it indicates that they have some control over the success of their relationships with their students. I don't have time here to get into a lot of specifics, but I wanted to share one finding related to how attachment predicted academic achievement. It's been found that insecure toddlers have shorter attention spans and perform worse on cognitive tasks than secure toddlers. Isn't that interesting? So the type of attachment that young children have can affect their cognitive abilities. Now let's switch to social support perspectives for a minute. Social support perspectives focus on students' mental representations of relationships. In these perspectives, emotional support can serve as a buffer from stress and anxiety. Also, relationships can be highly familiar and stable. This could be the case for elementary school teachers who teach the same students all year long. These social support perspectives also acknowledge that relationships can be fairly impersonal and short-lived. This might be the case for a student who meets with his high school counselor just once a year. Now I'm going to briefly discuss self-determination theory. Self-determination theorists explain that people have basic psychological needs. One of these needs is a need for relatedness, that is, a need for secure and satisfying relationships. Teachers' level of involvement can lead students feeling that their need for relatedness is met. Teachers express their involvement through demonstrating interest in students' well-being and providing emotional support. So in all three of these theoretical perspectives, attachment theory, social support perspectives, and self-determination theory, we have this idea that the student-teacher relationship is important. Yet some have thought that maybe it wasn't this relationship that was important, but rather students' relationships with their parents was really the relationship that mattered, and not the student-teacher relationship. In general, researchers have found that students' relationships with their teachers often predict academic and social outcomes beyond those of simply the relationships of the students with their parents. These types of findings suggest that student-teacher relationships are important. Researchers have also found that teacher support predicts important motivation-related beliefs, such as self-efficacy, intrinsic value, and academic aspirations. 
So now that we know that student-teacher relationships are important, we can turn to the question of, what can teachers do to foster caring relationships with students? Going back to the figure that I showed you previously, I'm going to use the research from these three theories and some others to explain this figure a little. To foster caring and positive relationships, teachers can clearly communicate expectations for behavior and performance, be willing to help students, provide emotional support to students, and ensure personal safety. Teachers who provide these things tend to have students who have a sense of belongingness and relatedness, which lead to students who have a positive sense of themselves and desirable goals and values, which then leads to improved grades and test scores, improved peer relationships, and improved behavioral styles. We must remember, however, that many of the studies related to this research are correlational and not causal. It is possible that one of the other blue boxes should be at the beginning. For example, maybe positive academic and social outcomes in the student's past has led her to have a positive sense of herself and has led her to set desirable goals, which then leads her to have a positive relationship with her teacher in the next school year. In addition to thinking about what teachers can do to foster caring relationships, I wanted to present a few ideas about the types of school-wide policies that can be improved upon to support caring. I took these ideas from the article cited here, and I would encourage anyone interested in more details to read that article. One of the ideas is to provide a variety of extracurricular activities that are accessible to students. Students who are struggling academically might find ways of establishing relationships and extracurricular activities, which could then motivate them to engage more in their academic work. Keeping school small can also be a way to develop a better sense of community within the school and relationships between teachers and students, as well as between students. Other suggestions include providing continuity of people in place, facilitating transitions to new schools or teachers, and decreasing transitions in and out of the classroom. Now I want to place these strategies related to relationships within the bigger picture of motivating strategies that can be used by instructors to motivate students. The music model of academic motivation provides key motivation principles for instructors to consider when designing instruction. A more complete explanation of the music model is provided elsewhere, such as in Jones 2009 and at the motivatingstudents.info website. But here I want to briefly explain this model and how the instructional strategies related to student-teacher relationships fits into the music model instructional strategies. The music model states that instructors need to ensure that students believe that they have some control over some aspects of their learning, understand why the content is useful, believe that they can succeed if they put forth the effort, are interested in what they're supposed to be learning, and believe that the instructor cares about whether they meet the course objectives. These five key principles can be remembered by using the acronym MUSIC. The ideas related to student-teacher relationships are mostly related to the caring component of the music model and to the success component to a lesser extent. I've represented that visually here by showing the five music model components at the top of the figure and the student-teacher relationships at the bottom. Considering the four primary recommendations I provided previously, three of them are consistent with a caring component, including be willing to help, provide emotional support, and ensure personal safety. One of the recommendations is also related to success, including clearly communicate expectations for behavior and performance. Of course, we can make the argument that a teacher that cares about her students will do all five of the key principles stated in the music model. In fact, in my own research, when I asked students to explain the ways in which their instructor showed caring, some said that their instructor took the time to prepare effective instruction, which could include all five of these key motivational strategies. But to really focus on just the relationship part of the student-teacher relationship, then the three strategies shown here under caring cover many of the things that a teacher can do. Of course, all three of these could be expanded much more to include many more specific examples. The purpose of this presentation was to provide an overview of students' relationships with teachers. More explanations of these ideas can be found in the references cited here. I have links to other information and videos on my website at www.motivatingstudents.info. 
feel free to contact me by email at brettjones at vt.edu.